Hi, this is Dark Fox 127 and welcome to another Skyrim Cursor Kitchen tour video. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to create your very own lumberjack with his own fully working sawmill. So this is going to work very similar to something like the sawmill in Riverwood, where you've got Hod, who works the sawmill, grabs the logs, put them on, has them cut and waits for it to be finished, and then repeats the process. That's pretty much what we're going to be creating here. Now, first of all, you're going to want a nice place to place your mill, of course. I have selected a place just outside of Whiterun, and I am in fact showing you a little bit of my new mod, which is part of Project Modularity, which we'll get into very own video shortly, explaining what that is. So I'm just going to be using Project Modularity to show how this is set up, and you're not going to need to worry about certain things in this, which I'll mention as we go along. So I've got my sawmill here. The first thing you need is all of the various items and connecting furniture pieces. So I'm just going to show you what those are. You are going to need the static structure, the farm lumber mill 01. You are going to need the furniture piece for it, which is the animated sawmill itself, which has a default script on, which we'll mention shortly. And this is the resource object sawmill. You do, of course, have the wheel which would power everything, and it's obviously going to need a bit of water nearby. You also have the sound marker, the nice effects for the water, and all sorts. Now, what you can do is go ahead and copy all of these items, which are in another cell. So go ahead and copy Riverwoods, for example, and just dump it into your own cell, paste it in. However, do be aware that if you do that, you might end up making some dirty edits to the Riverwood cell or wherever you've got it from. And also the references will be copied with 001 placed on the end. And what I like to do is give my stuff their own unique references. So if you do do that, and even if you don't, in fact, just go ahead and give everything important a nice reference. Because it's going to help when we come to doing packages and selecting various references. So just be aware, if you do copy everything and paste it in, that you might have dirty edits that you're going to need a third party program like test five edit to edit out afterwards. So just be aware of that because you don't want dirty edits. Now, what you can do is put it all in manually, of course, and hopefully the snap to grid works with these things because they do need to be placed very specifically with these gaps and such. You can also add nice effects like sawdust on the floor and other such things just to add effect. So I've added these bars on the side just to make it a bit more unique. There we go. So go ahead, get everything in place, and you're good to go. So the first thing that you want to do when everything's in place is... Go to the lever over here, which you should have if you've copied or placed it in manually. You'll need this lever here. Uh, it doesn't have to be this lever. You can probably experiment with other ones. Just be careful if things are not quite working as expected, if they're not activating it, if it doesn't have an animation, just go ahead and fall back to, to this lever. Keep the default script on there. You're going to need it. So the first thing you want to do is, if you've got your lever there, double click on your furniture piece for the sawmill. And you want to go along to the tab for active parents. You're going to want to double click in this box, select reference in render window, and double click on your lever. Now again, because I've got a nice reference in my lever as well, you can see I've selected the right thing. You want to put a delay in activation delay of one second. Click OK. OK again. Now before I carry on with another thing we need to link, you are going to want your very own lumberjack, your very own actor. So I have gone ahead and created my own actor. He's called Bodian. So just go ahead, give him an ID, give him a race, and get him dumped in. Get the basic set up first, confirm, dump him in, and make sure he's there to select. Or she. Could be a she as well. Uh, and I'll mention dialogue very shortly. So once your actor is in place, double click again on your furniture piece. Go along to the scripts tab. Don't worry, there's not really any scripting involved here. And make sure you're not editing the base script or you could break all of the sawmills in the game. Edit the one on just this reference. Double click there and you'll see right at the bottom there is a property for worker. It's an object reference. Edit the base. Click pick reference in render window. Double click on your actor. And you should see that you've got your actor selected. Hit OK and OK again. So that's the first part. Now, if you're wondering what that is for, it is for the evaluate packages function to take place with Papyrus scripting, which is very important because they are going to do one step of the sawmill and do nothing if their packages aren't re-evaluated. It's just to sort of kick up the arse of the actor to get them to move on to the next step, which will make a bit more sense shortly when we cover packages. So yeah, you want to make sure that that script is linked to your worker. 
because it's going to specify that this is the worker who is doing the job. So the next thing is go on to your actor and you can polish things off a bit. So if we just start from the traits tab, you'll probably want to make sure that they are a specific race. You'll want to go ahead and select a voice type. Now in this case, I'm doing a custom voiced actor, but you're not going to want to be doing that. This is just for project modularity. I'm doing this. So you're going to want to select something like a Nord voice. Uh, I would strongly recommend that you copy one of the available voices for existing lumber mills. So that one of the factions we add that might include dialogue will actually work properly. Uh, otherwise you might have some problems. So you want to select your voice. Uh, stats, you can pick the standard class of Lumberjack like I have here, although I might be changing this later on because I'll be making him a trainer as well. Uh, we don't need to worry too much about that. Just set generally how you want things. The factions are going to be pretty important. Now, there are two factions here you don't need to worry about, which is PM Faction Bodian's Mill and PM Faction Merchant Bodian. I am setting my lumberjack up as a merchant as well which is something i'm going to be covering in a video shortly how to create your very own merchant i know i have done that before in a previous video but i've learned a lot more since and there are some really cool things i can add to the new video that are probably going to interest people but yeah in this case we do not need them to be a merchant and we don't need Bowden's mill faction although when i do create new npcs i like to give them their own little faction if they're part of a group in which case this guy is he's part of his own little sawmill group so you can do that if you want now the crime faction white run and town white run faction are very important or at least for me I think they are. Uh, this is where you want to assign a crime faction to make sure that any crimes you commit against this person, his friends or even his items. So if you steal things it all gets reported to white run or whatever city you're within. So I am within the white run hold so I'm going to have town white run faction to say they're part of white run and I'm going to have the crime faction. Once you've done that make sure it's selected in assign crime faction as crime faction white run and you might want to just go ahead and confirm and reopen and make sure that that has selected because sometimes it likes to deselect itself so that's pretty important now relationships don't need to worry about here keywords the same ai data just make sure they're not pissed off and trying to kill anyone so he's obviously going to be unaggressive happy and a nice person one thing to note is energy so if he's going about doing other things and he's not working the sawmill which you might set up in packages uh, the higher the energy the more he's going to move around so it might look like he's doing more work or you can set it to low and make it look like he's a he's a lazy lumberjack you can do what you like now AI packages is fairly important before i go on to that i'm just going to note that you obviously want to go under inventory as well and you're probably going to want to select a nice outfit. In this case, I created my own textured version of the, the outfit for these guys. But you can go ahead and select the outfit that you want. So you want to go and make them look like a lumberjack. And go ahead, give them face data and all sorts. And use Control and F4 afterwards on the actor in the object window to make sure that it ex exports the face data. Otherwise, they're going to have a grey face afterwards. So the AI packages are the fun part. Now all I did is go ahead, create a brand new package. I recommend you do the same. I won't go duplicating packages and renaming them. Just create a brand new package and put it side by side to something like HODS packages and make sure you get the saw lumber, load lumber and recline lumber packages. Uh, name them roughly the same so it doesn't get confusing and you don't need to keep them on the same sort of time schedule. You can have this whatever you want, but I did just to make it nice and easy. So you've got saw, load and recline. Now you want to make sure these are in the correct order otherwise you are going to have problems because the way that packages work is it starts from the top and works its way down. So once one is not really applicable it goes down to the next one. And these are going to work off conditions, the top two. And the last one's what it falls back on. So you can add more packages afterwards, just make sure they're not going to conflict with one another and stop the actual lumber mill from working. So first of all, we have saw lumber. Again, I copied this from HODS and it is the package template of activate with a single reference. So you want to select your reference and you want to make sure that you select your lever. Now this can take a few seconds to load up, so just give it time. And in some cases, the creation kit likes to throw all of the current active windows behind the render window and such. If it does that, just click save and it'll moan at you for not being able to save because of dialog boxes, but it should push them all back to the front. So I'm going to shift these out of the way. Select the reference. Make sure you select your lever because this is the part where he goes up, pushes the lever, 
and gets the number mill working. So make sure that that's selected. I've already gone ahead and done so. Now under conditions, you're going to want get VM script variable. Again, you can just copy the condition and paste it across, but you are going to want to make a change and the change is going to be selecting the furniture piece for your sawmill. So in my case, it is the reference PM ref lumber mill saw mill Bodian. So I've selected this furniture piece here and you're going to want to do the same. Otherwise he's going to be trying to use somebody else's sawmill and it's going to cause all sorts of problems. So make sure you've got your sawmill selected there. Now you want to set this value to two in this case. This is different stages that the furniture piece uses to tell what he's supposed to do next. And this is where the evaluating of packages takes place because once this value is changed, which is handled by the script, it needs to give him a kick up the bum to reevaluate and go, okay, what stage am I on? I've got to do this. So make sure this is set up in the same way. Again, just copy them from HODS packages if you need to. And that is it for that package. So load lumber is very much the same thing. We've got the condition here. Again, select your furniture. In this case, it's value of zero because it's a different stage. The package is a bit different as well. It's activate special furniture. And instead of selecting the lever, you select the furniture piece there again as well. So yeah, dead simple. Just make sure everything's set the same as HOD. And the third one you can have a little bit more fun with. And you can select, if I just hit M here and show my markers, I have added the generic sort of wall lean marker here where he usually stands while he's waiting for it to finish its work. You could have a chair if you wanted. You could have him go and do whatever you want while he's waiting. But I'm just going to keep it the same here. I've set the radius as 500. Although that shouldn't really matter too much if it's a specific reference he's using. But yeah, just make sure you've linked both of these to wherever you want him to go and stand, sit or do whatever while he's waiting for the uh, the lumber mill to finish, finish its job even. Now the conditions are basically nothing because this is the thing that he just falls back on and just make sure that this is above the other packages that you have that might have schedules on them and such. Uh, in terms of schedule this is set to between the hour of 8 and 10 hours later so it's basically the start hour and how long it's going to take uh, sort of well not long how long it's going to take but how long he's going to be doing it for so i think the other packages are set the same as well so just make sure these have the same schedule it's basically his working hours for the sawmill so make sure all that is set as well and that's what's uh, been signified in the name here eight for ten hours that's how the game does it and that's how i recommend you do it although you can change the hours if you so wish obviously it's your sawmill do what you wish but yeah the packages are very important otherwise he's not going to be doing things properly and along with the packages, the other very important part is that you change this script and have him set up it pointing at your worker, not the wrong worker. Otherwise, it's just not going to work at all. Hit save. And what we're going to do now is go in game and hopefully see our sawmill working. Okay, so here we are at Bodian's mill. And you'll just see in the background there, Bodian doing the work so we've got this set up correctly and if we just go up we're going to watch this in action now a couple of things to mention are that one you're going to want to make sure that your nav mesh is very good and right up to the lever over there otherwise he's not going to be able to make his way around and two you might well want to set ownership to the furniture marker and also whatever he uses in this case the wall lean marker uh, to chill out and watch the work otherwise other people might end up using them and basically get in the way of his packages so this is working like a charm we'll just wait a moment and see him finish the job and then go and start fresh so you can see that, that script's working which basically kicks in the re-evaluation of the packages so any second now you should move there we go and that is it Bodian is working his very own sawmill and you should be able to do exactly the same. And that is it for another Creation Kit tutorial video. So I hope you found it useful. Please let me know in the comments section below. And you can of course check out my website at www.darkfox127.co.uk where you'll see all the rest of my work. And please go ahead and check out all the links on there. Thank you very much for watching and I'll speak to you next time.